Hello everyone, it's Barry here. Welcome to my Virgin Kitchen. Hope you're well. Uh, today, you're actually looking pretty well. Nice one. Uh, today we're testing some more kitchen gadgets. Uh, if you've missed any of the other kitchen gadget testing videos, there is a link to a playlist in the description below and also up above throughout this video. So watch this one and then check it out afterwards because it's probably a good hour's worth of kitchen gadget loving on there. And uh, it's not gonna stop anytime soon. Trust me, I might get a divorce. The amount of kitchen gadgets in my house Oh, check that out. Um, many of these are ones that you guys are sending me and I've got more coming. So there's some coming from Colombia. Thank you for that. You know who you are. Uh, so uh, that sounded so wrong, didn't it? Uh, so we've got these gadgets to review. And before we start, I need to show you another one that I've been sent, but I think it's a gadget. It might've just been a random thing. This actually arrived an hour ago and I posted on my Instagram and Snapchat stories asking what it is, but I'm gonna ask you guys too, okay? So you've got this like cylinder thing and there's nothing really much to that. It is just a cylinder, but then there's this head thing, okay? So it's got like a meshy top, see the mesh there? And you flip it over and this little module thing, ooh, ooh, do you wanna turn? No, it doesn't really wanna uh, come out, but it looks like it's got like a light bulb on it. So I imagine there should be a battery in there. Uh, it looks like a nipple but it came with it screwed uh, in this, like so. So you've got this weird nipply end thing and then the meshy bit. And then it also had this transparent lid that kind of looks like the top of a salt or pepper pot. Uh, that was on there, like so. This is all very strange, isn't it? Uh, and then we've got these plastic head things and all these do is they sit in the thread here and you can wind it on and then it just makes that gap in the middle a little bit smaller. So I genuinely have no idea if that is a kitchen gadget at all, but if you know what that is, it came in the sort of packaging that the kitchen gadgets arrive in. Let me know, please. Anyhow, let's crack on. Oh, and two other things. The queen is in the background to help me focus my camera. A lot of you guys still ask me that. And also remember some of these gadgets, as I said on the last video, can help people that have disabilities. So remember to consider that before mentioning your comment down below. Okay, first one is salt and pepper penguins. I don't really feel like this is an official kitchen gadget. It's just more of a novelty gift, which I'm getting sent those as well. So we'll go through that. Wind up to roll across the table. And it's like a orange beak and a yellow beak penguin. I've got to say, it's probably the most well-packaged gadget I've ever had. It's uh, it's looking quite flush and maybe like a novelty gift or something, as I say. We're going to just take the uh, orange one out. Got nice little wheels on it. And you just go like that. No, you don't. You wind up the uh, friendly knife that's been stabbed into it. Okay, so I've got the pepper one as well because he's got the three holes on his head. And then we go... <laughs> My dog's freaked out. Leave it. This one was like, I want to eat it. <laughs> okay, so that is pretty hideous. I can't even see where. Die. Are you dead? Oh, there's still some life in you. Stop it. Uh, so how do we get the actual salt in it? Do we lift it up? Ah, oh, okay. oh my gosh. <laughs> to get it, you, de you decapitate a penguin, which is uh, something I've never really wanted to do. So you're going to sit your salt and pepper in there. And look, it's like Darth Vader helmet. And my knowledge of Star Wars is not great, but look. <laughs> Cast me the pepper. Uh, yeah, there we go. So that would go on there like so. Although it kind of looks like a little cannon if you have it like that instead, rather than a penguin. I kind of prefer that. Awful, but fun. I'm going to take you to a place. A place where you've never been before, where you have got excited about a gadget that uses kale. Uh, this is a chiffon. I like that, chiffon. Uh, I might call uh, another kid that. I don't think I'm gonna have another kid, but if I did, I'd call it chiffon. Uh, loose leaf kale and greens stripper, which that is taking me all kinds of places. I thought this was gonna be hideous when it arrived in the post, but I'm actually quite excited about it. It's gonna strip our kale. And on another notice, notice, another note about kale, it kind of reminds me of the parody song that I did with James, Hungry Eyes. <laughs> Hungry guys. Which, to be fair, needed a higher production value, but I wanted to do the same with this song by replacing Sale with Kale. Kale! Let's check the gadget out. So we'll start with Rosemary. I like the smell of that. Uh, first hole's too small, second one too smallish, and the third one... Yeah, it'll just about pull through. Okay, so here we go. Herb goes on there, and then we just pull through, like that. I'll go for the slightly larger hole this time. Let's see if that works. Oh, 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 it's snapping. It is kind of working though. Some of the rosemary fell off, but let's try it with the time. 
Thyme, also equally as pungent, but slightly more rough and sinister of the herbs. Uh, we're gonna go in the second smallest hole here, and we're gonna pull that through. Come on, work with me. Oh yes, yes! We have a bold stick and lots of thyme. It's time for thyme, if we had the thyme. Stop doing thyme puns. The kale is ready. We're gonna need to use one of the bigger holes, so let's go for the biggest one, actually. Okay, so with the leaves away, we just go straight down. Oh. Pull it off like that. Oh, look, <laughs> it's got kale and there's bits of thyme in there everywhere. But this works. It's called a loose leaf and I'll leave a link down below if you want to get one. And as a bonus, I've made my kitchen worktop look a little bit like Narnia. Our next gadget involves opening a can slash tin of beans, um, but I just can't actually find it, so I'll be right back. Have you got it? No, okay. I genuinely don't know where it's gone. It was literally right there, oh, right there. I am such a donut. I put, well, I was looking for the tin, right, to get the can. Oh, I'm gonna need a can. So I put that in where that was, kind of swapped it over. So this, by Culinaire, I think they're quite a well-known brand, actually, uh, is Magic Can, the easiest way to open a can. But I don't think it is, because I have another gadget that I'll do on another video, which does it without me having to touch it. Magician is the world's best-selling can opener, as it's the easiest way to open any can. I can't see anything like magic about it from the instructions, though. It's like I could have just gone magic fork, magic fork. A magic fork, look guys, pay £10 for magic fork because it's the best in the world. All right. Nice, clacky sounds. It's slightly brown in colour, you might not be able to see because of the shading in here, it's not always that great. Uh, and it just, all right, that, that's it. There's no magic. I was hoping like a magician or a rabbit might pop out the hat. Anyhow, so we stick this on our can like so, just rest it on, press. Oh, okay. Oh, go on. Yes. Okay. Well, it's taken the lid off cleanly. Um, and I guess it's not flapping up. So that is safe. You don't want to put that tin in your face. <laughs> uh, but yeah, okay. That's magic. I do have a much better one than that that I'll show you on another video, all right? Cheers. This next one is the Diablo. Uh, Diablo is Spanish for devil, hence the uh, devil thing and the devil shaped pan thing, which you'll see in a minute, right? So Mrs. Barry and I actually did a one hour live stream on the Facebook uh, My Virgin Kitchen fan page. So if you're not a fan, check that out. We're doing lots of live stuff now. Uh, and we tried it out. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I was so excited to use it. But now I'm gonna show you guys. It's basically a really cool sandwich toasty thing over the hob. And that's why they call it the Diablo, folks, hence the horns, but you basically open it up like so, and you can fill it with your wildest dreams. So you can do sweet or savory in this. An apple pie would be awesome, but we are gonna do savory. Uh, so the bread goes in one half like that, and you just press it down a little bit, and then we fill it with anything of our choice. So we open that tin of beans, we might as well use it. So we're starting with some cheese going in the middle. Uh, this is actually one of the recipes I did on the live stream. We did a Nutella one as well. And then these are the baked beans. Uh, I've drained them off a little bit actually to get rid of the sauce because you don't want to get the bread too wet. Big old pile of cheese on top as well and then our other bread over there to squish it down. And then we clamp uh, the Diablo in there. So just going to press it down like this. And then you'll see at the back there it's got this latch. Just use that so it doesn't pop up. And now we give it a haircut. We get rid of this excess bread. In the live stream, Mrs. Barry was being quite overly cautious about this, but uh, she made me trim all the edges uh, nice and flush. So we get it all off there like so. So our beans and cheese are all safely wedged in there now. It's time to get it on our hob. All right, putting on the low flame for loads of control. Um, I did a quick survey to make sure there was no rogue bits of kale on my hob, but uh, this should not take long at all. When you think one half is done, all you do is flip it over, uh, loosen it off, Lift it up and ta-da! Can you see that? Nice charred side. So we've already got it the right way around. We just clamp it up again and repeat that step. We'll see what it's like. Just placing it down carefully on a cloth because I don't want to brown the devil into uh, my chopping board. And we lift it up. Oh my gosh. Just gonna lift it out with a spoon. That is so hot right now. And I just grab our other knife. Oh my gosh, look at that. Cheesy beans. Mmm, stringy cheese. That is so, so good. Right. This next one I'm oh, I'm really excited about. It brings back memories actually. Uh, my first video, I'm called My Virgin Kitchen because I was a virgin in the kitchen, taught myself how to cook poaching an egg. The toast I used in that very first video all those years ago had an I love you stamp on it. And uh, Simpsons fans, this takes it up a notch. This is the Simpsons, Homer Simpson toast stamp. 100% uh, official, uh, which is peace of mind because you can implant Homer Simpson into your toast and it's 100% official, so it won't look like a monkey. 
Looks like it has got a little handle there to help us. In we go. I found with these things, you have to really make sure you get even pressure on it before you lift it out. And if you've got really thin bread, it's probably not gonna work for you. Come on, gently does it. Oh my gosh. That is way better than the I Love You one I did years ago. They've improved the stamp technology for toasting stuff. Let's do it, let's toast it right now. Don't, I don't wanna go in the toaster. That's the best impression you're gonna get. I should not have done that. Anyhow, bye Homer, let's see how you come out. Oh! <laughs> okay. Ah, that has kind of worked. Kind of worked. Jesus, it's hot. Yeah. It's kind of worked. Our final gadget is returning to the toaster again. These are reusable toaster bags. And I've seen these in like really like retro shops here in the UK everywhere. Uh, and I've always wanted to use one. Basically, you can make a toasted sandwich in the toaster. So you actually get uh, two of these futuristic style bags. It actually does look like the sports almanac bag from Back to the Future that it was carried in. Uh, maybe a little bit, a bit retro, uh, but you put your whole toasted sandwich in there and it's supposed to be like no fuss, no mess, all that stuff. So I've got some more bread here. I've got some really cool uh, mantel cheese. I'm also just using it because it looks like the stereotypical cheese that the mice have in the Tom and Jerry cartoon. We're doing a nice little cheese and tomato. Get some more cheese. Okay, that's that one on there. So our sandwich is ready. I went for cheese and tomato because basically that's what it had on the cover. Just to add to this, it does say the cooking times are only a guide on it, but there are no cooking times anyway, so it could take hours or seconds. Let's just get it in our pouch. Wow, it's a pretty snug fit in there. I had to squish the sandwich down loads to make sure that it actually fit in there. All right. Back to the toaster we are. So from Homer Simpson to, uh, oh look at that, looks like a bit of a dainty shopping bag. In you go. Are you gonna fit in? Yes, you are. No, you're not. Oh no, go in. Oh no, my toaster's, I turn my toaster off for safety. <laughs> what, it just fell in? Oh, okay, this is not good. I was just thinking, I'll use a fork to push that down. Don't do that, okay? I'm gonna use a wooden spoon uh, just to push that down a little more, get it right in there, okay. Not sure if you can see that, but there is smoke coming from the toaster. The cheese isn't melted yet. Oh, God, <laughs> scared the life out of me. Um, okay. Oh, oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. I think we've definitely cooked it. Uh... Oh no, what's going on? All right, okay. <laughs> yeah, ah, it's hot as well. Okay. Um, hey, hey, hey. Okay, so it has burnt a little bit, but that's why they call it toast, okay? Because it's toasted. Nice charred effect. Uh, let's flip it over. Okay, that side's a bit better. Nice. We've got melted cheese a little bit. Oh, we probably did quite. Need to slice my foot off. Um, we did put quite a lot of cheese in there. Uh, so, it's a bit scorched. I've been trying to work out why I'm not a fan of it. It's a toasted cheese sandwich, it's awesome, but I just remembered I'm not a massive fan of tomatoes. That is basically why I just wanted to copy that picture on the front. That is it then folks. Really hope you enjoyed this kitchen gadget testing video. Feel free now to check out the playlist because there's loads more good ones and not so good ones, but check it out and see what you think. Uh, links are down below if you want to get any of the stuff. Remember to subscribe for regular recipe videos. I do two recipes a week and on Sunday is the fun day. And follow me on social media for loads of behind the scenes bits and bobs, live streams, and giveaways. I'm actually on my Facebook page and we're doing giveaways um, of all these gadgets. I've got to get rid of them. See you next time.